In uh, this project, we are going to create a Chrome logo, which is uh, going to be our next uh, application icon. And before we start, uh, let me just uh, point your attention to the fact that we have an artboard right here, whose dimensions are set to 500 to 500 pixels. Uh, and I already created a color scheme right here. So I just got five simple colors that uh, really uh, will make this uh, logo uh, what it is. So we are going to start with creating a simple ellipse. So I'm going to grab the ellipse tool, hold down the shift key and create an ellipse that is going to look more or less like this. What I would like to create right now is I would like to create a hole inside uh, this ellipse. But uh, there's uh, one thing we need to bear in mind for this whole effect to work. We do need to have a hole cut out inside right here, but we also need to cover it um, with an ellipse that is going to be, well, basically white. Because um, in order for this whole shape uh, to work, we need to divide the outer ring uh, into three, but we also need to make sure that it's going to look uh, nice against uh, different backgrounds. So we can't just leave this hole open, we just need to cover it with white so the logo looks, uh, looks proper. But uh, before we move uh, to all that, let me just uh, clone this guy. So I'm just going to press Control J on my keyboard to clone this ellipse. As you can see, this is this guy right here. And I guess we could turn it white. So now we can have like, uh, you know, we can create an illusion of cutting this hole inside. Maybe I'm going to make it uh, this big. I'm going to press Control C to copy it into my clipboard. And then I'm just going to press Control J to clone it again. And we're going to make it smaller till it to look something like this. And it needs to be blue. So I'm going to fill it with blue. Let me just pause uh, for a second. Now we got the underlying ellipse, the red one. We got this ellipse right here. And remember that we copied it into our clipboard and we got this ellipse. So in total, we got three ellipses. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the white ellipse. Then I'm going to shift click on this underlying red ellipse. And I'm just going to press subtract. So what we have right now is this cutout form and this ellipse. But as I said before, since this, um, let me just maybe show you what I am trying to tell you. So if we just have like a different color background, let's say it's going to be yellow and I'm going to move it all the way to the back. You can see that right now this hole right here is well is showing this yellow color and the original logo is white in this spot. So we cannot leave it like this, but we need this ring for the final effect to happen. What we need to do is we need to paste that copied ellipse back in. So I'm just going to press Control V. This is this white ellipse and I'm going to put it beneath the blue ellipse like that. So we got the white ellipse, we got the blue ellipse again and we got this cutout form right here. So the next step would be to divide this outer ring into three separate parts uh, so we can actually uh, create um, this, uh, well, the main effect for this logo. So I'm going to start by grabbing the pen tool and I don't need the fill, I need the stroke. So I'm just going to press shift X on my keyboard and uh, we can leave it at something like four uh, points or we can go down to one point or two points. That's really not, uh, not that important right here. But what, Im what is important is, uh, let me just zoom in, is to create a, well, something like a triangle up here that is going to be stretched out from this anchor point or this node all the way out here and then it's going to go back down here and finish uh, the shape. So with the pen tool I'm just going to click on this anchor point or node then I'm going to go back to somewhere here and finish the shape like that. So if I just press shift x you can see that we have this, let me just maybe put it all the way to the front. You can see that we have this shape created and let me just snap it with this part right here. So we got this yellow guy, this yellow triangle, but we are ultimately going to be needing just this part inside 
this outer ring. But we are going to take care of that uh, of that in just a second because what we need to create right now is we need to create two copies of this uh, triangle right here. So we need one here at the bottom and we need one uh, here at the left. So what's essential for this technique to work properly is we need to set the transformation origin point. So here inside the context toolbar, you can see this uh, this option right here that says show rotation center. Once it's off, you cannot see it, the rotation center. And once it's on, you can see this, well, this bottom, this center uh, appearing right here. So what we want is we want to rotate this triangle in relation to the center spot of this ellipse. So if we just move it down here, you can see the designer is actually showing us the center spot of this uh, white and actually uh, also the blue uh, ellipse. If we leave it right here, then press Ctrl J to duplicate this uh, well uh, this uh, triangle and then move our and our cursor over this handle right here, you can see this double cursor appearing, which means that we are now going to be rotating this guy in relation to that center point. And uh, what we want, uh, as I said before, is actually three copies in total. So if I just hold down the shift key, I'm going to be able to move this guy in 15 degree increments. And ultimately what we want is we want to move it to somewhere here. And if you can uh, take a look at the transform panel, right now we are rotating this guy by minus 120 degrees, which is actually what we want because uh, as I said before, we need three copies. And if we divide 360 by three, that's gonna be 120. So if we now let go, we are going to uh, copy and move this guy rotate this guy right here and then if we just press Control J we are going to duplicate the last transformation which was rotating in relation to this uh, center point and of course we cloned it so we are rotating and cloning it at the same time. So once all these elements are created we can select them then select the underlying ring so right now uh, this red ring is selected and these three curves and from the toolbar, I'm going to choose Divide. This is this pathfinding options. And we only want these outer, this inner ring shape. So we don't need these outer ones. I'm just going to start selecting them and um, removing them. And of course, we don't need these guys either. So I'm just going to select and remove them. And we are left with these pieces right here. So now we're going to start to given uh, these guys proper colors and some shading. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to select this path right here, copy it into my clipboard, shift click on this first part, this guy right here, unite them. And then I'm just going to make them yellow. And now if I just press uh, Ctrl V on my keyboard, I'm going to paste this uh, copied shape uh, back into my clipboard and I'm just going to choose plain black color. And uh, here inside the layers panel, I'm just going to drop the opacity down to something like 25%. Uh, if you want to drop it uh, down even further, that's going to be totally up to you. I think that 25 should be all right. So now what we have to do is we simply need to repeat this whole process. So again, I'm just going to grab this guy right here, copy it into my clipboard, add this uh, red part to the selection and then unite them, make them green. And then just I'm going to and then I'm going to press Ctrl V to paste this guy back in, make it black, drop the opacity down to 25 and then again grab this yellow piece right here, copy it into my clipboard, shift click on the red part, unite them, paste that guy back in by pressing Ctrl V, make it black, and then just drop the opacity down to 25%. And there we go. We basically got our uh, Chrome logo uh, created. 